On to FY2, uh, which is where I am now. My first job was in general practice, as I've said, and I already knew that I didn't want to be a general practitioner. I'm not geared, you know, my mindset is not geared to be a GP uh, or doing family medicine for those people that are in America or somewhere else. Um, so yeah, I did my four months. They were really nice. Um, I had more time to live life. I never worked a weekend. Um, I had two half days a week and it, it was awesome. I had so much time and actually I learned a lot. Um, I didn't think I'd learn as much as I did in general practice because I just imagine it to be really boring. But you really learn about, you know, patients that are really unwell and patients that are not really unwell. And um, there's so many things that you're exposed to in general practice that you probably don't get exposed to as much in, um, in secondary care, for example, chronic mental health problems, chronic diabetes, that sort of thing. Um, whereas when I did A&E, um, which was, again, an awesome, awesome, awesome job. Um, it's probably, again, on the same part as doing um, general surgery and doing Obzangaini. I learned so, so, so much in A&E. Again, I was so worried about doing A&E because, you know, people are unwell. People come to hospital after traffic accidents or after having a heart attack at home and stuff, and I was so petrified about it. And it, it was a worrying job. For example, we had a resuscitation area in a &E where all the acutely unwell people would come so the London Ambulance Service will bring patients through this um, directly rather than having to wait in the waiting room and you're the doctor in resource you're the one that's dealing with these unwell patients and it is so much fun guys I can't even tell you um, so much fun that I was even considering a and &E when I was doing this the resource part of a and &E was the best thing ever um, seeing acutely unwell patients starting treatment you know doing things procedures and stuff uh, it was so good and um, I'm somebody who likes to work in the hospital um, somebody who likes to um, you know be hands-on and do procedures and do stuff uh, and so doing this in a &E was really cool and now I'm doing obs and gynae which is something that I want to do as you guys know and um, I'm starting specialist training in obs and gynae i.e. residency in obs and gynae in a few months time and I can't wait I'm really really enjoying the job I get to see pregnant women and do cesarean sections and all that um, as well as gynae surgery laparoscopic surgery it's it's all so cool <laughs> FY2 feels like a more grown up year. You are now the SHO. You are the person that, you know, is expected to have more knowledge than FY1. And you do have more knowledge than FY1 and you're much more confident and probably, you know, less less i don't know what's the word you're less sort of worried about making mistakes you know um if you can't get blood the first time around you can try the second time whereas when i was in f1 if i couldn't get it the first time i would just start palpitating and i would just <laughs> give up on life you know uh but when you're in f2 it's like yeah i've I failed so so what i can do it again um which is something that um, I think is a comfortable feeling. Your clinical acumen, your clinical knowledge um, holds more weight than it did when you were in FY1. So another thing about FY2 is the growing up decisions that you have to be making. And this is something that sort of hits you like a train. You have to decide now about whether you want to continue in medicine, you want to apply to a specialist training program, um, you want to stay in your location or you want to move somewhere else. And for most people, you know, they're 26, 27, 28, 29 maybe um, in F2 and these decisions are something that, you know, your peers who you went to school with but are not doctors have have made already they're already married and they already have children and they already have houses and you're out here trying to get your competency signed you know <laughs> um, so that's the thing about FY2 that I think is a little bit more depressing I will say part of that feels I don't know <laughs> it feels like um, yeah it feels like you're a little bit late to the game you know um, that's certainly something that you know people really talk about as F2s and SHOs and you're realizing that you know you're still on this trajectory now medical school was five or six years long which is a long time to get a degree and you've now only just started at FY1 and FY2 and you have another seven years to go which is what I have because I want to be an obstetrician and it's just like mm, sometimes you just think you know what let me just take a break 
and let me do other things in life um, just so I can sort of catch up with people but yeah this is something that I think makes F2 a little bit more depressing than being an FY1